Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. College football previews return. We are talking FBS independence. <laughs> That's right. I'm pretty excited. I basically look at this as like a conference, right? Okay. Like I mean, I, we, I, do, we do lump all these guys together. Yeah, because it, there's only six of them. So we make it easy. There's, there's one massive name, one really big name, and then the rest are like, okay, I'm with you. Like you, you got a third that you could maybe call. Mm. Okay, I, I think because of nationality, Army is a is a bigger name than you would think. They're they're not massive. BYU has a bigger big. fan base. Oh, than, BYU has a massive yeah. fan base. No, BYU is big. Yes, yes. And Notre Dame is one of the biggest schools in the world. Absolutely, that's the way it goes. All right, so I'm Gary, and I'm Chris. <laughs> this is Winning Cures Everything, of course. We, we are going through. Off poorly. It's a, man, you know what? It happens. It happens sometimes. All right, so uh, the show, we're going to jump into that. Brought to you by betnow.eu. Use promo code WINNING50. You can see it down at the bottom of the screen if you're watching on the video. If you're listening on the podcast, it is in the description. So go check it out. Click the link, betnow.eu. Promo code WINNING50. W-I-N-N-I-N-G-5-0. That will give you a 50% deposit bonus. Great online sports book. The layout is fantastic. The odds are awesome. They make it easy for you to figure out. They uh, they they like us. They treat us well. They will treat you well as well. They make it simple to bet. It's perfect for recreational gamblers. Go check it out for yourself. Betnow.eu. Use promo code WINNING50 for a 50% deposit bonus. We're going to jump into the FBS independence. Uh, but first, go to winningcureseverything.com. Make it easy on yourself. Everything about us is over there. Our Facebook, our YouTube, our podcast. You can get us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, whatever your favorite podcast app is, we are on it. Go to Apple Podcasts, though. Leave us a nice review. Share the show out. All those wonderful things. Tell your buddies about it. Leave us some comments on the website uh, or in the YouTube, etc. We are uh, We are pumped to be here. Another football year. This is our fourth in a row. We're excited about it. So let's jump in. Let's talk about Notre Dame. The Notre Dame Fighting Irish, 12-1 last year. Returning starters, they got eight on offense, six on defense. Experience, nationally, only number 98. Not great. Brian Kelly, 81-35 in nine years so far, which is crazy to think about. This is going to be his 10th year, right? Uh, has double-digit wins in three of the last four years and in back-to-back seasons for the first time since Lou Holtz was there two decades ago. Uh, returning the offensive coordinator Chip Long and defensive coordinator Clark Lee, that is a major league thing, right? Because uh, there was talk of Chip Long going to Alabama. Clark Lee, not a lot of talk elsewhere, but you've seen guys like that have a really good season and then bounce, yeah, right? Get, get hired away somewhere else. Uh, yeah. I was wrong last year about Clark Lee. I'll just go on and tell you. I, look, I had him going eight and four last year. Yep. Because it had been two decades since they'd had back to back double digit win seasons. So of course, when they won ten games the year before, that I thought there was no way, right? Uh, but I was wrong. Number thirty in total defense. Uh, look, losing Mike Elko, I thought was going to be a disaster because I think that guy's a genius. But Clark Lee learned under him and everything, and he uh, he implemented everything that he learned. Uh, Very successfully. Number 13 scoring defense in the country. They got help because uh, Tillery and linebackers uh, Tranquil and Corey stayed for their senior seasons. This year, however, they're losing all three of those along with cornerback Julian Love to the NFL. Uh, You and I have talked about Julian Love and how important he was to this team. Correct. Uh, You could see it clear as day in that Clemson game. It was was night and day from when he was in and when he was out with that injury. Uh, Look, defensive ends, uh, Okwara. I think that's how you say that. And uh, let's see, Gilman, I believe that's right. That Both of those guys return. Uh, that's, that's big. That's big. You got some experience. You got some guys coming back that can lead that defense with the newer guys that are coming in. Quarterback Ian Book and four out of five offensive linemen are back, uh, everybody but the center. Uh, former wide receiver Jafar Armstrong and Tony Jones Jr. are replacing running back Dexter Williams in the backfield. The schedule, manageable. But they are facing seven teams coming off of bye weeks. 
Uh, but they do get a bye before the Michigan game, and Michigan has to play at Penn State the week before, so they got a break there. Yep. Uh, the game at Georgia is going to reveal a ton about whether or not this team is capable of getting back to a college football playoff or if it's just another you know 10-win, 9-win team, right? I, I will tell you, I've got them at 10-2. and two. Okay. I've got them losing at Georgia. I've got them losing at Michigan. I think Michigan gets payback on this one. I think Georgia's going to be really, really fired up for this. It's going to be at night uh, between the hedges. Uh, other than that, I mean, yeah, some of these teams get buys, but, like, look, they, they've got at Louisville, New Mexico at home, at Georgia, that's one of the losses, Virginia at home, Bowling Green at home, USC at home, and then a bye week. Then you play at Michigan, but then you got Virginia Tech at home, you got Duke uh, on the road, you got Navy at home, Boston College at home, and then you close out at Stanford. So I've got them nine and three, and I've got the two losses you've got. I think they're going to lose one of those Virginia Virginia Tech games at home. I think both of those teams are going to be good this year. Virginia Tech, I have no earthly idea how to explain what happened last season. I mean, it, I don't. You know, I don't think that's falling apart or having anything to. Do. No. And if Bronco Mendenhall continues to improve. Which is what he's done every year he's been there. Yeah. Then the next step is is going on the road and beating a big boy school. I could see this because if if Notre Dame puts everything they've got into the games at Georgia and at Michigan, Michigan the next week the next they week is play Virginia, Virginia. I know they get them at home, Virginia but Tech. that's right. And both of those are going to be well coached. They're going to be good schools. And uh, we put a lot into home field advantage, but sometimes that's sometimes it doesn't mean as much. I mean, you keep, right? I, I also like, just don't think teams, and I don't think that's a, I don't think it's a bad thing. No, no, I no, think like, Virginia Tech or Virginia could be really good. Yeah, no, they absolutely could. But but what I'm saying is, as far as home field advantage, like sometimes people just assume what well, they're at yet. home, etc. But the deal is, you can get really comfortable at home sometimes. That's right. Like for years, it happens under, all the time. For this decade-long Saban dynasty, yeah. the only games they lost were at home. That's right. You know, it, and it's because you feel safe. You feel like, God, oh, there's no way they're going to come in here with all of our crowd noise and everything else. But sometimes it ain't like that. So I've got them ten and two. You got them nine and three. I got them nine and three. I don't know where that other loss is coming, but I just think those other two schools are going to be well coached. They're really good. Notre Dame's coming off of big games. Whether they win yeah. those games or lose those games, those are going to be hard-fought games. I think that's where a team can sneak up and, and bite them, and uh, and that's nine and three. But I, I like Notre Dame a lot. Yeah, I think oh, this, this is think this is a, a really good school. Yes, I I think I think Brian Kelly is. I'm not going to say underrated or undervalued. I think he's underappreciated. Underappreciated. That's a good now, word. But it's hard. I've been one of the guys that's been on him. It's a, he's an ass. Oh yeah. Okay. So like when a guy's a jerk, it's you, you hard can't to be an ass and lose. It's it's hard to go out of your way to try to really talk him up or to sell him or to or to kind of give him the benefit of the doubt more times than not. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. All right, let's move on. The Army Black Knights. Oh yeah. Eleven and two last year. Seven starters back on offense, four back on defense. As far as experience goes, number sixty five nationally. Head coach Jeff Munkin. 35 and 26 in five years. Uh, he learned the triple from Paul Johnson when they were both at Georgia Southern. I mean, that's how far back this thing goes. He has perfected this. Offensive coordinator uh, Brent Davis starts his sixth season with quarterback Kelvin Hopkins Jr. and six other starters back from the number 35 scoring offense in the country. I mean, you remember they hung 70 on Houston. I know. At the end, I, rem- which, I remember that Which game. was part of why... Like, I, first off, I had the under in that game. I know. I remember I just, that, I too. I just could not believe it. it I remember that, too. Uh, defense coordinator <laughs> Jay Bateman left for North Carolina after he uh, he had a massive season last year. Enjoy. Now, again, some of this has to do with the fact that they have the triple. Uh, Army had the most time of possession in the country last year. I think it was uh, 38 minutes. Um, let's see if I put it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, 38 minutes and 33 seconds a game yeah. that they held on the football. That is absurd. That's, that's ridiculous. Yeah. That is that is really unbelievable. But but it did help out the defense, right? Oh, yeah. Number 10 scoring defense, number 10 rushing defense, number 8 total defense. But now he's with Mac Brown, uh, new defensive coordinator John Luce. He only returns 54% of the total tackles um, and a whole new starting defensive line. But a lot of upperclassmen here. This is a good thing. It's, it's guys that rotated in. They may have lost starters, 
but they get a whole lot of guys back. They got three out of four back in the they secondary. They still have plenty of playing time. Yes, and the schedule that sets up. That's what I think it, about when I watch this. Is yes. I, I like the way this team is put together. I like the coaching staff. I like a lot about them. And then I look at the, I look at the schedule, and I just think, if they beat Michigan, there, there aren't any losses here. This thing, if if they beat Michigan in week two, come. we could see a very interesting scenario. Where remember they do the college football playoff stuff in the New Year's Six games and whatnot. They announce all of that the week before the Army Navy game. That's right. We have not had a situation where one of those teams where one of those would be in consideration. Right, and and so they, they would have to grab an at large spot. So they got to be ranked like in the top eight, really, because it, they're not a Group of Five school, and. It's worded so that a group of five champion has to take that. So the AAC could still get somebody in, and Army could find a way to be. It, that's if they beat Michigan on the road. But we're just two. talking about New Year's Six Bowls. Yeah, they just New Year's, but they, still, they would have to grab one of the at larges. Even which means you might knock before. out somebody like Ohio State or like Alabama or Georgia or whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's going to take a lot to do that. Uh, but this is the way that the schedule breaks down, and we'll we'll run through it really quick so we don't take too long. But Rice at Michigan, at UT San Antonio, Morgan State, Tulane, at Western Kentucky, at Georgia State, San Jose State, at Air Force, UMass, VMI, at Hawaii, and at Navy. They could absolutely lose the at Air Force game. Yeah, and they could lose at Navy. But neither one of us have that. They they uh, could they could feasibly lose. I think they could realistically lose at Air Force. I would be shocked if they lose at Navy. I mean, so would I, but it's it's not out of the question. True, like, I mean, losing at Hawaii wouldn't be out of the question either. But other than that, I mean, really, you, the the Michigan game we both assume they lost. So we both have them eleven and one, right? Or twelve and twelve one, and one because of thirteen game. Yeah, we, we I mean, we're we're we got, there. yeah, I got them twelve and one. We think they might possibly lose to one of these other teams, but we can't really see it. Yeah, I, I just I'm not. I don't. I see mean, it. this schedule is. Pretty soft outside of Michigan. Yeah, it's 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 pretty ridiculous, man. I'm I'm not gonna lie. This is. I want to see them put up numbers, and they gonna put up a whole. I bunch I want to see them put up numbers. I think it's fun. I usually triple option games are that they, they can be really boring. They're either gonna, but here's the thing: they're either usually really boring, or they're really exciting. And there's kind of never one of those. Oh, they were fun for two quarters, but the other two quarters, they just killed the clock. Like, that's not how it seems to work out. No, you're right. Oh, we're beating the hell out of Houston. It's okay. We're hanging 70. Yeah, hey, and that's, that's what they do. We're trying to get 80. They don't have a problem with that. All right. They don't have a problem with that. All right, next up, the BYU Cougars. 7-6 and six last year. Uh, return 8 on offense, 6 on defense. As far as experience goes, nationally number 49. Head coach Kalani Sataki. 20 and 19 in three years, went nine and four, then four and nine, and got off the hot seat a little bit last year with the seven and six season, thanks to a new offensive coordinator, former LSU offensive line coach Jeff Grimes, who really sparked the offense well, last year. Got a big win against Wisconsin, which helps you get off the hot seat. Yes. Well, and, and what really turned him around was uh, quarterback Zach Wilson, right? He, he was a freshman last year, uh, took over for Tanner Mangum. Um, who it felt like he had been there for a decade. Correct. Uh, I think he had, was it a sixth year of eligibility granted to him? And so, yes. But after after six games, even though he was the senior leader of the offense, it wasn't ticking. Things weren't working right. They brought him in. Uh, the offense responded. It, they've got eight starters back on that unit this year, so that's definitely a good thing. Defense loses leading tackler, linebacker Siani Taki Taki, which is an awesome name, very, very awesome name. And they lose 6'9", defensive end, Corbin uh, Kafusi. I, I don't know how to say that, but I remember watching him last year, and it was absurd seeing that 6'9", yeah. dude out there. Uh, they've got, they had the number 18 total defense last year. Uh, defensive tackle Tonga is a star. Like He's going to be a force to be reckoned with this year. Schedule, not easy at all. I think they're going to be a lot better than their schedule, uh, than the record indicates. I've got them going six and six this year, and that is only because of how ridiculous their schedule is. I agree. It is bonkers looking at this thing. Why they would set it up the way that they did, right? Like this is 
We'll we'll just run through it really quick. This is part of being Wait, independent. You I've got, got them put, six and six. What do you have? I got them five and seven. Five and, but, and that's but reasonable. this is this is part of being an independent. I mean, Notre Dame. Wait, the schedule, Army's an independent, and they. I yeah, mean, but that that they they get a little bit of benefit of being a military academy. BYU um, is, but like Notre Dame does this. I mean, yes. Do you look at their schedule last year? I mean, Notre Dame had a gauntlet, brother. No, it, it's true. It's true. And like BYU, I think just may not have been quite ready for this. Well, no. Now they could surprise me. They could end up going like you know ten and two or something. I just don't, I don't see. It. I don't see it. Uh, I don't see that. Here's what they run through. They've got Utah to start with. Of course, a that's game. a big rivalry game. Tough, they tough get game. it at home though, so that's good. Nah, I don't know if that matters. Um, <laughs> at Tennessee, USC, Washington, at Toledo, at South Florida, Boise State, at Utah State, Liberty, Idaho State, at UMass, and at San Diego State. Like it is front loaded like a mother. Oh yeah. It's so like I think they're gonna win the last four games. I think they beat USC. I think they win at Toledo, and that's it. Six and six bowl game. I think they're pretty happy with that after looking at this gauntlet. So my logic, we and you had the conversation about the USC game, and my logic is: as a team like this, if they beat a team like USC, is a game they're not supposed to win. Yeah. They usually tend to lose a game they're not supposed to lose, and so I kind of count it as a wash. But would, would South Florida or Utah State be a game that they're not supposed to lose? Probably not. I think those are equal. See, and that's that's the thing. I figured, I don't, I don't I figured know that if they beat USC, they'll probably lose at Utah State. Like, I don't think they lose at home to Liberty or Idaho State. I don't think they lose at UMass. Uh, I think the game at San Diego State basically defines the whole season. Okay. But the fact that that game against San Diego State comes after San Diego State's conference season... Like, I, I think they're not going to care about the BYU game. Uh, I don't think any of these. The coaches that are good coaches, San Diego you, State's you a might great be right. coach team. They, there is no I don't care about this game. That doesn't exist. Now you might be right. It just doesn't exist in these guys, You might man. be right. You might be right. I'm just saying, I think that's a spot that BYU could end up. I think it's a tough schedule. I think I think Liberty's a tougher that's, game. You, you say that, but you love Bill Clark, and you saw what Bill Clark did in the, the last game last year against uh, Middle Tennessee. I mean, they got beat twenty-seven to three at Middle Tennessee State, and then turned around and had to play them in the conference championship game the next week. I think so, that's a little different. I, I look at it this way: San Diego State. Well, I, I've got them at ten and one at that point in the year, and I've got BYU at five and six and needing to get to a bowl game. Well, you're right. One team will want it more than the other. That's yeah, that's, that's, that's all I'm fine. Saying. That's fine. And it's not to say that the coaches don't care. It's that somebody's probably going to want it more than the other one, and I okay. think it's going to be flip flop that way. All right. And so, um, uh, what you got them five and seven? I got them five and seven. Okay, let's jump on to Liberty, the Liberty Flames, and I cannot wait to talk about this. We we can't spend too long, but six and six last year. We we can because we can just smooth through the last two. That's true. That's true. All right, returning starters for Liberty doesn't matter. Six offensive, <laughs> seven defensive. Look, experience nationally. Number five in the country. God. They got a ton of returning starters back. Uh, not returning starters, a ton of returning experience. Guys that have played. Head coach Hugh Freeze replaces retiring Turner Gill. Uh, he inherits some talent on offense and a lot of experience. Defense, still going to be a problem. Defense has been a problem, but I, I love that Hugh Freeze got this job. Right? It's, it's perfect. It's great. Um, you want to talk about fit. Hey, you want to talk about all-time names. Do you know what their quarterback's name is? No. Dude. Give it to me. Buckshot Calvert. I'm dead serious. <laughs> now, I know he's got a real name, um, but I couldn't find it. Like, every preview magazine has this guy as a Buckshot. So, Buckshot Calvert returns. He had 3,300 yards, 29 touchdowns, 6 interceptions. You going to look it up for I'm me? I'm trying. All right. Uh, three out of five offensive linemen return. The leading wide receiver and running back are back from the number 34 scoring offense in the country. Defense has major talent and depth problems. Uh, I mean, it, it just it ain't going to get better. Number 117 scoring defense, number 123 total defense. We got a name? Steven. Steven Calvert. I'm going to stick with Buckshot. Buckshot Calvert. I love this. Uh, so, yes, number 117 scoring defense last year, number 123 total defense. New defense coordinator, Scott Simons. He's bringing a 4-2-5 scheme, which – you are really going to need if you got guys throwing all over you. Uh, 
the secondary. They're going to have five guys back there at all times. The schedule sets up well enough to reach six wins. I think the biggest question is how long does Hugh Freeze stay here, right? Forever. You think forever? Yeah. Man, I think I think he played I think a couple of years at best. I think he played with the big boys. I think he tried to pick a fight with the biggest boy in all of college football. Won that fight on the field, lost the war. And then he tried to pick a fight with the rule makers of college football, lost that one badly, and then got embarrassed and realized when people start digging through your personal stuff, all your skeletons come out. And I think now he's made enough money. This is his world in the way his religion is, in the way his personal beliefs are. And I think he can live in this area and coach at this school for the rest of his life and be happy. We'll see. I think he stays like two, maybe three years. I also have them going eight and four. I think good. Hugh Freeze. Gracious. I think Hugh Freeze is an exceptional, exceptional coach. I've got him six and six. I, got a, I think he's an exceptional. Like coach. here's, a, I mean, just looking at the schedule, I like. I, I originally wrote down nine and three and thought that's ridiculous. Good. That gracious. won't happen. I I caught, yeah. I caught myself. Well, I've I've got him starting out zero and three, right? Because I've, I've got a loss to Syracuse, loss at Louisiana. Lost to Buffalo. I think they could win one of those three games. Okay, and then they beat Hampton, beat New Mexico. I don't think Syracuse is New one Mexico of those. State. But I think if, if you at told Louisiana me they, or Buffalo, if they, they could, beat one of at Louisiana or Buffalo, it wouldn't surprise me at all. No, no, that, I, could, I could see it. Hugh Freeze um, will be the best coach on the field. That's true. Oh, well, are we sure? Yes. Lance, yes. Lance Leopold from yes. Buffalo? You, yeah. He, he took your boy Saban to the woodshed with garbage talent, okay? Yeah, he did not have garbage talent at Ole Miss. Are you crazy? He had four or five guys that made it to the NFL, and the rest of them, the rest of them couldn't be managers in the NFL. Okay, okay, okay. You you got a point. You got a point. And I don't know about taking to the woodshed. Let's not go crazy. Okay. Well, he beat. He's the only team to beat you back to back years. Yeah. That's and then true. you called the NCAA on him. That's it. fact. I that love happened. how you. I love how you jump in like it's me. That like happened. I'm the one that did it. You did it. I, I saw you do it. <laughs> We were doing the podcast. Uh, man, I, I know. It's a, you want to know how many Ole Miss fans hate me? Good gracious. I'm sorry. Hey, if it had been Mississippi State, I would have done it to them too. I'm just saying. Uh, all right, so I've not, I not a denial. Got them three and three. Okay. And then I got them beating Maine, losing at Rutgers, but see, I can see them beating see, Rutgers. There's just, there's just no way this team loses to Rutgers. Hugh, Hugh Freeze is a, not going to lose to a Rutgers. A team. win at UMass, but a loss at BYU. A loss at Virginia, but a win at New Mexico State. I've got them six and six. I think I think they make it to a bowl game. I, this defense was so bad last year. No, there's no question. But there's going to be a lot of teams that make bowl games that have bad defenses. Because, right, but I think they can make it to a bowl game. Because college football has gone so offensively. I just heavy. don't know about eight and four. Like what do you is... think of Rutgers? So I think they're going to beat Rutgers, and I feel very good about that. I think they win one of those two against Buffalo, Louisiana, Louisiana, Louisiana Buffalo. games. So now I've got my eight wins. Now you're eight and four. Or, or they lose both those games and they beat BYU. I don't know, man. BYU is that's that's a bunch of men. Like I think it's a little different. They are substantially older than everybody. Yeah, else. that's all I'm saying. That's a bunch of men. That's different. That's that's religion against religion. But that's right a holy there. war. Yeah, it is. I'm not getting into that's that. It's pretty crazy. All right, uh, let's finish up with these two. These two we only are doing strictly because they're independents. Well, no, we said not, we're doing independents. No, I said that we're, we're doing every FBS team. We're doing all 130 FBS teams. Hey, this is it until we get to the Power Five. Okay, that's a good thing. Look I, look at it this way. There are fans of UMass and New Mexico I don't State. Mean to, I don't mean to disrespect the Like, fans. there's fans of it, and they, some of them will watch this video. Hey, I don't know that there are football fans of UMass. I've, I've spent a lot of time in the Northeast. In the last year, I bet those they, are my people. The people they, that watch they, this may be like parents of the Boston, players or something. Boston College, a good football yeah, school College. up there. People still don't watch. Let, let's. You might be going a little strong on the good football school. Like, it, come on now, it, it, compared to everybody else up there. I mean, you might be right. I don't know. But like, who else are we talking about? Penn State, like UMass. Oh no, Penn State's not in the Northeast. Okay. All right, a, fine. That is a Temple? Midwestern school. Temple? Maybe? Uh, no, Temple they care about. It's it, Yeah, some. Some. No. They didn't when they were losing. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. You get UMass winning, which Mark Whipple did not do. All right, let's talk about New Mexico State first. 
These two teams, they can win three games together. The New Mexico State Aggies. <laughs> three and nine last year. Seven returning starters on offense, six on defense. Experience, number 70 nationally. Doug Martin, 20 and 53 in six years. Dropped from seven and six in 2017 to three and nine last year. This year does not look any better. How Doug Martin has his job after six years and going 20 and 53, I have no idea. Uh, Martin is the OC here. The offense was number three in tempo last year. That did not translate because they were number 95 in scoring and number we're, 97 in total offense. We're going to play fast. Yeah, but maybe just, not good. We're just not really good at it. Um, look, freshman quarterback Josh Adkins, like, obviously he was really inexperienced last year. Well, really had no experience because he was a damn freshman. But, uh, you know, I mean, it, the defense was awful, uh, specifically number 125 in the country against the run. The defensive coordinator, Frank Spaziano, addressed that issue with three Juco linebackers that he brought in, uh, which should help benefit the four returning defensive linemen that they've got. Schedule is nearly impossible. They've only got five home games. Uh, I mean, li- listen to this, okay? Give me the rundown. At Washington State, at Alabama, San Diego State, at New Mexico, Fresno, Liberty, at Central Michigan, at Georgia Southern, at Ole Miss, Incarnate Word, that's a W, UTEP and at Liberty. I got them 111. I got them 111. Like they, they, it's you, a garbage you team. You see what's cool about this is that they play Liberty twice. Like they, they've set this up a couple of times where they play Liberty at home and then they close at Liberty because these two schools did not have enough. See, at New Mexico State, New Mexico State, right there. So I don't know that I know. How did I not notice that? It's. I think it's happened a couple of years in a row, and it's yeah. But until they, Hugh Freeze got to Liberty, I I could didn't care. care. Less. Yeah, I just like you, uh, North, not New Mexico. But what do you have, New Mexico State? What, one and eleven. Sounds about right. You want to go to UMass? I got them ten and two or two and ten. Sorry, <laughs> I have ten dys- and two. I have dyslexia as well. Uh, uh, let's, two and ten. Yeah, let's close out with this. We'll, we'll no, make it. Have three wins we'll between the two. The UMass Minutemen. What do you got them at? They went four and eight last year. Hold on. <laughs> Four and eight last year, three offensive returning starters, three defensive returning starters. The last place team as far as experience in the entire country, number 130. New head coach Walt Bell, former OC at Florida State last year, which was garbage. That was a good job. Uh, at Maryland before that, mm, I mean, they beat Texas. So. Uh, Arkansas State. Yeah, but that was that. Before that. That was that head coach's offense, not. Agreed. Uh, takes over for Mark Whipple, who went 16 and 44 his last five years there. He was much more successful back in the early 2000s. And 16 and 44. 44, yeah. Number 34 total offense last year, but they lose their top passer, their top receiver, their top rusher, three out of five offensive linemen, and uh, their Juco quarterback, uh, Andrew Brito, did not arrive until this summer. So he hadn't even had a chance to learn this offense yet. Uh, number 123 in total defense last year. Number 127 in scoring defense, loses all three starters uh, on the defensive line. But Penn State grad transfer linebacker Jarvis Miller should make some kind of an impact. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty big name to get, right? Even though he was uh, second team, he was a backup at Penn State. But here he's going to be the dude. So uh, Bell relying on a ton of JUCO help. They, they signed seven JUCO guys out of 21 commits in the 2018 class. The schedule, the lack of experience, means a rough first year for Walt Bell. I got him 1-11. I got him beating Southern Illinois. I got him losing to everybody else. I got him 2-10. I, I, I have no idea where they'll find two wins. but I mean, the, the back part of this schedule, like Liberty, at Army, at Northwestern, BYU. Like, they, they play at Rutgers, at Charlotte, Coastal Carolina, Akron, at FIU, at Louisiana Tech, I mean, UConn. Rutgers, Coastal like, Carolina aren't. Juggernauts. No, but they're better than UMass. Ooh, but they're, could they win one of those games? Sure. Yeah, they could, yeah. One eleven, <laughs> two and ten, absolutely. All right, that's going to wrap up the independence. Of course, share the show out. Go to winningcureseverything.com. Go to betnow.eu. We'll see you guys next time. 
Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.